Hey guys, how's it going? Today, I'm going to be featuring the Gascoigne, the tier 7 premium French battleship that you can buy in the store for 750,000 global XP. I'm just going to go ahead and see it right now. Do not waste your global on this ship. There is really no reason to get it, especially since there are so many other French battleships at the tier that are just simply much better. The Champagne, Richelieu, even Flandre is better than this ship. I do wish Wargaming was a little more creative in the design of some of these ships and what they're meant to be played as. For example, the Flandre could have been given better secondary range and like PC, even though these secondaries are 100 millimeters and won't pen anything, the fire chance and the amount of fires that it could start would be absolutely insane. The secondaries die extremely quickly, so there is a balancing factor for a secondary build Flandre. They could have also done the same thing with the Gascogne and given it better secondary range. And the Gascogne has 127mm secondaries, so that means it would actually be effective in penning superstructures or destroyers. But unfortunately, every single French battleship is basically played the same with a accuracy commander. Or if you're trying to just get insane reloads, then you would do the brawler commanders with megalomania and brawler. But for the most part, none of them are unique in the way a ship like Massachusetts stands out for the Americans. Which also I wish ships like Key had a capability to build for secondaries and it had good range. But most of the battleships don't actually get secondary range because Wargaming does not want secondary builds, I guess, even though one commander is pretty much designed for it. And that shot at the broadside Nelson is pretty much one of the reasons I don't really like the Gascogne. And that's because even with a accuracy build, these guns are pretty inaccurate. I would have been better off using the Champagne, and I most likely would have citadeled the Nelson. These French battleships, with their speed, you do want to typically try to push out to a flank and create crossfires with the majority of your team. Since you have an engine boost, getting out to those positions on the flank are much easier and much quicker than your typical battleship. Unfortunately, shooting at this bunch in twice and getting nothing but overpens. Not sure if he slowed down to try and dodge my shots, but he does slow down right in front of some torpedoes. And he is dead. Now there is a Baltimore and a Lenin. And one of the things about the Baltimore and these French 380s is that you can't overmatch 27. Which again is why I would prefer a ship like Champagne because I can overmatch the hull of heavy cruisers using frontal fire. Since I use AL Dunkirk, I'm able to switch to HE in one second, so it's not that big of a deal. But for anyone who doesn't actually have a Zerling Dunkirk and use frontal fire, you would shoot AP at a bow in Baltimore and basically do nothing. The Nelson is spotted again, pushing through the middle of the map. I take aim at his broadside, and then again, looking at that dispersion, it's still pretty bad, and I get one pen and two over pens. The performance of this Gascogne so far is not that great, although looking at the map, for some reason their whole team has pushed into Bravo, and it's definitely not something that usually happens. I get another shot at this Nelson and his broadside. And while well, that dispersion again doesn't look that great, I do finally manage to land some citadels. All it took was three different salvos. I'm trying to basically catch up to this Nelson to see if I can get another shot at his broadside before he gets behind the island, but it doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to. Our team is capturing the Charlie objective, so we will have two caps and they will only have one, and somehow our team is all on this side of these islands as well, which is a fairly interesting that has happened, because you rarely see entire teams on the separate sides of these islands. There is an enemy Baltimore and Lenin, still holding us at the front, not allowing us to push through, 
and their whole team again being in the middle of the map with these ships in front of us can create crossfires this enemy flandre is just reversing for some reason and we are trying to take shots at his broadside we do get a pretty decent salvo landing six out of the eight shells not knowing where the enemy destroyers are i am concerned if i keep pushing towards the lenin and baltimore i will get torpedoed through the gap and as you saw there there were some torpedoes coming through the channel so i am going to start turning in and trying to dodge torpedoes coming from the gap i do delay my turn in because i don't want to ram into our friendly battleship and be stuck broadside to the enemy Lenin because that is a quick way back to port. A third set of destroyer torpedoes show up and I slow down just in time. Now I have to make a decision. Do I want to fight an enemy Lenin that is bow in and an enemy Baltimore that's bow in or this low HP Flandre and the Nelson and Flint that I can overmatch? I decide I want to go and face those enemy ships that I can definitely overmatch and risk myself being torpedoed. Being in the gap here, I am going to be bow in for any torpedoes, so hopefully I am able to survive and, and destroy the other three enemy ships. I do eat one set of the Zed's torpedoes. And the ACAT has reloaded and is starting to launch torpedoes into the gap. I do slow down in order to make sure that I don't eat any of these torpedoes. The enemy Flandre has healed and there is a smoke screen right beside him. So I know he is probably in will to rebuild. I end up beaching along the island, but I'm also unspotted. So I know that there is no destroyer in front of me. The ACAT is still trying to torp through this channel, but since I beached, these torpedoes have no chance in hitting me. But now, all we need to do is be patient and figure out what the enemy is doing. I take a look at the score, and we are losing. However, we do have two caps, and they only have one. For some reason, their destroyers have not decided to go and capture Alpha, which will turn out to help us in the end. Our destroyers that are behind us are finding it difficult to find angles to torpedo some of the enemy ships. The Nelson does end up reversing right in front of us, and we can overmatch his stern and citadel him, but we get some pretty interesting dispersion there. We do land one citadel. However, now we have to wait till our one front turret reloads again, or find a way to get our back turret to have an angle. I start going forward and I do turn right to try and get my back guns to have an angle. My front guns reload again and I take another shot but every single shell just goes straight into the water and doesn't actually reach the Nelson. Shells landing short bug or simply dispersion you be the judge. My back guns do eventually get an angle as I reverse. And I only get one citadel, and I get a couple of overpens. It's a bit tragic that I only got one citadel on this broadside Nelson at 4 kilometers, but that is the French dispersion for you. I'm finally able to kill off the Nelson, and all I'm going to do is simply try and reverse out of this gap, because now that the destroyer's smoke is gone, I am still spotted, and I know that they are right in front of me. The enemy Lenin does get spotted and he is charging in towards the gap right in front of me. So I do want to try and figure out how to position myself so that I could possibly do a drive by or find an angle on his broadside. I do go unspotted so that means the destroyer probably has torpedoed and moved to one of the sides of the island. Our friendly destroyer is launching some torpedoes through the gap. Our friendly Paolo Emilio does somehow get spotted and ends up dying, which is really unfortunate. And somehow, even though we have the cap advantage, we are still losing. And also down big on our ships versus what they have left, a 6 versus 3. The enemy Flandre has healed quite a bit. 
unfortunately, their destroyers get a bit careless and we do end up spotting the Z-23. Our friendly destroyer is also shooting at him and we are going to be able to even the playing field and have one destroyer on our team and one destroyer left on their team. The enemy Akatsuki also does get spotted and I do try to call target on him because we want to try and kill him off as quickly as possible. Enemy torpedoes show up. I do turn in to mitigate the damage. However, now I am bow in and not going to be able to get my back turret off at this Akatsuki. He is trying to get away, but I know there is most likely torpedoes from the Akatsuki coming this way. So I turn hard left and I'm trying to get cover with this island. The Lenin is pushing in behind us. And now we are in a bit of a pickle with a destroyer and Baltimore in front of us and this Lenin behind us. Trying to figure out what to do. I am most likely going to try and take a fight with this Lenin because I can definitely death strike him with one turret if I'm able to do a drive by in reverse. He comes around the corner and I try my best to angle as much as I can without going around the corner exposing myself to some of the destroyer's torpedoes. I shoot the Lenin's turret and I do incapacitate one and he does try to get my turret back but I do angle it just in time. The Lenin is coming around broadside and he does start to angle however I can definitely hit the Lenin's cheek and still citadel him. I start reversing and I take aim right under his turrets and I'm able to get a triple citadel killing off the Lenin. Now we have even the playing field at a 3 versus 3. But with an enemy Akisuki somewhere in front of us, we definitely don't want to just charge out there. I am trying to reverse and I do launch my plane in order to spot any ships over the island. However, I make a huge mistake here. Thinking that both of my guns were loaded, I accidentally tried to use frontal fire and I just accidentally end up switching to HE and having to go through a full reload. The enemy Akatsuki gets the smoke up and he does get away. However, the Baltimore was also spotted for a brief second going forward and coming towards us. So we are going to try and take a fight with him. He gets spotted fairly broadside to us and we take a shot at his citadel and we are able to dev strike him. I guess this is where all the RNG went since for some reason we're able to citadel this cruiser with a relatively small citadel but we can't get more than one on a battleship that has an absolutely massive citadel in the Nelson. After dev striking the Baltimore and that Lennon, we are up on points. However, our New Orleans is pinging our destroyer for support and looking at the minimap, he is full speed through that channel. Ideally, we would have just stayed on our side of the island and simply have one out on points. But with our friendly cruiser going out there, I do need to try and support him because the last thing I want to do is have them kill off our friendly cruiser and then perhaps killing off our friendly destroyer since he is also going out there to support our cruiser. I tell them to get back hoping they would but I don't think they are so I just go forward. The Akatsuki is spotting me so I know he's not in the smoke anymore. I am also safe for the moment with torpedoes since we just saw them pass us. However, a cat torps do reload relatively quickly. So we will have to keep our ship going and make sure we turn and don't sail in a straight line. I try to go out here making a target for this enemy flanger to shoot at instead of our friendly cruiser. However, our friendly cruiser that just charged out there just ends up dying. And now we have to worry about this Akatsuki that our destroyer is struggling to kill and this enemy flandre who is just charging in. I am going to try and kill off this enemy flandre as the enemy Acat just goes unspotted. The enemy flandre goes bow in and I make sure my guns are loaded to use frontal fire. I shoot my guns and the dispersion is absolutely horrendous. I only landed one shell out of eight. Well, technically I did land more, however they didn't do damage because they didn't go where I aimed. The Gascogne's accuracy is just rough to deal with, which is again why I prefer the Champagne over the ship. 
and why also the other French battleships like the Flandre, Richelieu, and even Jean Bart are just simply better than the gas can. With the enemy destroyer just running away and the clock running out, we are going to win this game. And we were able to bring back a 6 versus 3. This ship is definitely rough to play. It is entirely reliant on you getting out to a flank and then shooting a bunch of broadsides. But even then, the accuracy of the gas can is still pretty bad, so you won't exactly be smashing a whole lot of broadsides. So, if you can, just stick to the champagne. Going over my commander build, I do use a Zerlane Dunkirk because she is simply the best commander because it's a hybrid. You get the accuracy and survivability with Master Mechanic and getting two extra heals. But yeah, this ship is definitely... A rough one but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did leave a like and subscribe for more or leave a comment down below for any other ships you want to see in the future but until next time aloha